call this meeting of the Rotary Club of Oakland to order. I'm Dudley Thompson, and I have the honor to serve as the president of the Rotary Club of Oakland. Founded in 1908, we're the third established Rotary Club of some 36,000 clubs in over 200 countries around the world. We're a diverse community of some 270 local business, professional, and community leaders who unite local and international communities through a common commitment of service above self. For over 113 years, we've welcomed Rotarians and guests to our club meetings, and I welcome you to this, our 5,389th meeting. For those of you attending online, if you are visiting Rotarian or the guest of a Rotarian, please enter your name in the chat box. It's located at the bottom of the screen so that we can recognize you in a few minutes. And if you have comments, um, well, I guess, yeah, we're going to have self-introductions today. So if you want to ask questions of the speaker today, you can't do it, sorry. they got three minutes and they can't go over. Uh, so today we recommend that you use uh, the meeting using speaker view located in the upper right hand corner of the screen. For those of you here in the ballroom, I ask that you not use your electronic device to watch the meeting on Zoom or to connect to ballroom Wi-Fi. Okay, so for the near future, we're back live after six weeks. That's, uh, We've been off and on again this whole year, but we're back. We're going to stay live through June unless something dramatic happens. Um, we've been in, I'm just going to say we've been in conversation. There's people that felt we shouldn't meet, people that are reluctant to come. We want to respect anybody whose decision is not to come to a meeting. We fully understand Hello? that. We also ask that people wear their masks when they're in the ballroom, uh, especially if you're not, well, if you're not eating or drinking. Uh, our protocols in Oakland allow for uh, meeting together without masks, but it's please protect yourself and others by wearing a mask. We want to make this meeting as safe as we can and also that people feel safe to come to our meetings. I also ask that you refrain from talking during the meeting as sound becomes background noise for our ballroom. Dana Sack, could you lead us in a thought for the day? What you do makes a difference, and, if you, and you have to decide what kind of a difference you want to make. Jane Goodall, a huge fan of the Oakland Zoo. Thank you, Dana. Um, are you able to get the Rotary Vision statement up? <laughs> okay, folks, could you share with me together? We see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Uh, that's particularly important because the Rotary International Conference begins uh, next Saturday, I think is the first day of the conference. People are gathering now. Uh, Mary Jiang will be going. I know Barbara Berry is going, uh, and Jesse uh, Bowell will be going from our club. Um, and you might, if you are going and we don't know it, you might want to let them know it's in Houston. Some people just didn't want to go to Houston in June. Um, nothing against Houston. Um, okay, past district governor and past president, Ed Jello. Do we have any visiting Rotarians today? Let me check. I <laughs> we'll start inviting guests in the room and then we'll go to Zoom. Uh, just, just a second, Tricia. Do we have, can we get a little more sound on the mic, uh, Ralph? So after, after the meeting tonight, today, we'll be at a retirement party for him celebrating 42 years at Merrill Lynch. I know there. I know we have some other guests uh, here. Uh, Keith Uriarty. Around you, uh, here. Okay. Um, my guest today is Sergeant Barry Donlan with the Oakland uh, Police Department and President of the Oakland Peace Officers Association. 
Alice and Bliss. Thank you, President Dudley. My guest today, stand up, Lil, is Lil Enriquez, the Executive Director from the Mycelium Youth Network, who we gave a grant to this year. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm front, Jason Jason Weisel. Weisel. Thanks, President Dudley. Uh, my guest today is Melissa Donahue with New York Life. Thank you, a welcome guest. guest. Um, Peter, do we have any guests out there on our Zoom channel? None that I see. None that I see. Okay, okay, we, we don't. don't. Um, that, that was silence, silence meaning we don't. don't. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, we're, we're going to run. run. We're going to try to hold very tight to our meeting today. And I'm going to ask Merlin Edwards, would you please come up and introduce a new member for us? Mary, would you come up too? Thank you, President Dudley. Uh, <clears throat> I know there are those of you who haven't seen me since I've not been to a meeting for like two years, uh, other than Zoom, but I do have the honor and the privilege today of introducing who will become our uh, newest uh, Rotarian. Uh, she's a good singer, as a matter of fact, she's done various solos with the San Francisco Opera, but some of the interesting facts about her, um, as I said, she's got a background as a vocalist, and she's done video games and movies and movie trailers. And she also worked as a freelance singer at the Skywalker Ranch. The second interesting fact is she's an avid uh, giant fan, but we won't hold that against her because she's converted. She's now an A's fan. And the last interesting fact is her father was a golf, uh, golf coach. And he coached her, so she plays golf, but she's not very good at it. <laughs> so, President Dudley. Thank you. Thank you, Merlin. We'll, 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 we'll get, get to, to the big part. part. Okay. okay. Mary, Mary, we're, we're happy, happy that you've chosen to join us. us. Uh, know, know that you and your family and friends are always welcome to join us to participate in our projects and our events. By choosing to join us, you have accepted the Rotary Vision Statement and also agreed to conduct yourself according to the four-way test. For you, um, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Your red badge indicating that you're a new member um, will be, um, <laughs> I have, will be waiting for you when you come back to the ballroom. I have the Zoom stuff here. Um, you now have your red badge. Uh, you'll, and you will receive a Rotary Made Easy Handbook explaining all the uh, unwritten rules that are now written. Um, your Rotary Pin. Uh, please, we hope you'll wear it with pride. Your commitment is to attend meetings, participate in service activities, practice service above self, and contribute to the Rotary Foundation and the Rotary, Oakland Rotary Endowment. It's my pleasure and my privilege to induct you as the newest member of the Rotary Club of Oakland. Please give Mary a warm welcome. Forest Woodcraft. 
Cal was born in Jefferson County, Arkansas. He is one of the middle kids of a family of 10 siblings, seven boys and three girls, just too shy of a full basketball team. Do you, do you have the PowerPoint? Photos for Cal? There we go. Thank you. There you go. Today he's the only surviving boy. His mom, Riddell, moved the family to California in 1960 to raise Cal and his siblings. When mom passed away when Cal was nine, he moved, moved to Oakland with his two older brothers and one younger sister to live with his great aunt, Letha. Cal went to Hamilton Elementary School and Elmhurst Junior High. It was at Hamilton in fifth grade that Cal first started going to the Boys and Girls Club or the Boys Club of East Oakland. The, what is now the car branch. Cal became a regular club member, grew to love basketball, and became pretty good at the game. When he was in eighth grade, two of his boy club friends, Michael and Billy, got the job of junior staff at the club. Cal followed suit after completing 100 volunteer hours and got hired, starting at 75 cents per hour. Doing well, Cal. <laughs> Cal quickly discovered his passion for developing youth and worked for the Boys and Girls Club throughout high school, then opted to pursue it as his career choice, starting with enrollment in the American Humanitarians Program, now called the Leadership Institute, and then on to the University of the Pacific in Stockton. Cal attended Castlemont High School, go Knights, where he cracked the starting line up on the vaulted Dyke basketball team as a junior. He played forward and remembers many games, especially a tough two-point loss to Oakland Tech, which went on to win the tourna Tournament of Champions. While well, UOP, he continued to pursue his basketball passion as a walk-on. Cal Studies emphasized youth administration, or youth agency administration, economics, child growth, and, and child growth and development. As an internship at a local club, an internship at a local club prepared him to embark on his career at the Boys and Girls Club. It was at, gradu it was at his graduation party, a graduating senior convinced him to take his first wife to the store to get party favors. He fell in love at the store. Following graduation, Cal applied for the branch manager job of the Boys Club of Fresno. He worked in the sweltering heat for two years before being recruited by, wow, I just cannot read this small type, Marion Mary Sims to uh, come up and run the Boys and Girls Club of Oakland. Ten years later, he took over and has been running the Boys and Girls Club of Oakland ever since. Cal has two kids with his first wife and one with his second. I'm not going to get their names. Uh, and and has the gift of four grandkids. Cal is a diehard Warriors fan. Go Celtics. I suppose you'll root for the Red Sox, too. So I, I've been on the Boys and Girls Club board now for a couple of years and uh, got roped into running our event, our spring fundraiser called Salute to Youth. And it's a live virtual event on uh, June 23rd at 6.30. It'll go about a half hour, totally kid-run event. Shot all the video yesterday. It's going to be great. So I'd love it if everyone would uh, make a note and attend. I'll, I'll have it up on social media very soon. So if you follow me there, uh, you can register there. Anyways, reintroducing Cal Stanley. And I'd, I'd like, like to ring a bell for Cal. Uh, ring, uh, Sean rings a bell for Cal. And, and also one for Linda and Jim Bosnacker. Uh, uh, Jack McAvoy, is that how you pronounce it? Jack McAvoy has one. Patricia Connors uh, for Cal. Uh, Fred Morse for Cal. Uh, Robert Kidd for Cal. Do we have some online? Uh, uh, 
Ed Jellin for Cal, Michael Bruck for Cal, Merlin Edwards for Cal. Do we have any online out there? I'm assuming we might have one or two. Does anybody have any glasses for Cal? <laughs> Worn up to be a Marcus. Uh, brings one for Sean here. So, for new members and guests, uh, ringing the bell is a generous $100 gift to the Oakland Rotary Endowment. And I'm assuming there's going to be some out there. We'll get to them at the end of the meeting. Thank you very much, Cal. And it's great, it's always great working with you. I'm always privileged to, when I have that opportunity to work with the uh, Boys and Girls Club of Oakland. Thank you. David Kittner, looks, looks like, like you're next, next on the list. Can you tell, tell us what's, what's been going on in community service this year? Thank you, President Dudley. I'd love to. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what we did in community service this year. So I'm going to go through the grants that we made so that you have an idea of where your club money went to. Um, uh, talk about uh, feed the hungry and give you an update on our final distribution numbers and then talk about service days and a service day coming up. So, do we have um, the slides? There we go. Next one. Okay, super. Uh, we did our grants in four major areas this year. Uh, social justice, arts, environmental, and then where people made a grant application to us. Next, please. You can read all of these. Sorry that there's a little mess up there. I'm just going to talk about the one of them, and that's uh, St. Vincent de Paul. We gave them money to buy computers for their computer room. So you see all these programs that are out there, state level, federal level, and everybody puts everything online. So many of the people that need those services do not have the internet, do not have a computer. So you'd be surprised how much need there is for people to just access services, that, I mean, benefits that are available to them that will help them help our community. They just need a way to do it. So that was that grant. Uh, for St. Vincent de Paul. Next. Okay, with arts, um, we gave them $2,500 to Destiny's Art Center. It's been there now for several years. Um, there's also a connection with Rotary uh, uh, to the center. And we gave that to help them. They were uh, uh, completely redoing their visual arts and their audio visual for their center for their performances that are there. Next. And on environmental, uh, again, simple things that you can do. We uh, gave $3,000 to the Lake Merritt Institute, and that allowed them to put a little outboard motor on a little skiff that they have. So instead of just picking up trash around the lake, now they'll be able to go out into Lake Merritt to pick up trash. So again, some small grants that we've done that have improved our community, impacted the lives of people here in Oakland. So if you want to know any more about any of these, I'd be happy to give it to you. Uh, next. Oh, oh, and then the grant applications. We had a couple of grant applications where people applied that we made, again, during COVID. Uh, Spectrum Community Services is providing a lot of meals to people that are uh, homebound and we gave them money for warmers so that the food that they're delivering to people will actually show up warm and not kill them. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, Feed the Hungry. Uh, again, I am humbled by the generosity of this club. We collected in the door cash checks $51,300. And, and, and for perspective, the highest number that's apples to apples is 16,500. So we went from 16,500 to 51,300 in a year. So we're going to be giving a check of $7,328 to the seven uh, organizations that you see there. That's going to be happening in the last two weeks of June. If anybody would like to join on a check delivery, reach out to me. We're going to be setting up those deliveries, and you're welcome to come while we go make uh, the check delivery. Next slide, please. Service days. We actually did a couple service days this year where we planned several and uh, got one accomplished. Uh, one of them was a police activities league. So we've gone now, this is, I, I believe, our third or fourth. Camp and cleaned it up. And now, uh, next slide, please. 
So there were the folks that were up at the Police Activity League camp. Uh, next slide. And see all those wonderful cabins there? They have new roofs that Rotary funded. We mauled all the shingles for those roofs about three years ago. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and now we have a service day coming up. This is my very bad attempt. That's um, uh, right where you go in where um, uh, uh, Fairyland is. You know, the little loop around the Lake Merritt Gardens. Well, uh, on the 11th, June 11th, we are going to be uh, having a service day uh, in the um, uh, area that is maintained by the Oakland Fukuyomo Sister City Association getting it ready for the 60th anniversary celebration of the Sister City Partnership. So it's, as you can see, the little red dot, it's about in the middle of that garden. Um, if you're at the Bonsai Garden, that's not where it is, but it's close. Just keep wandering around in the middle to see two 40-foot red poles, the Tory Gate, and that's right where it is. Uh, bring your hat, bring gloves, bring sunscreen. Uh, we're going to be pulling weeds, uh, working in a little pond, and trying to get the uh, area ready so that uh, they can then put a sign with pebbles that they have collected um, through another grant that we made to do uh, a sign for this commemoration. And actually, there was a, a very interesting, a cute little article in the Montclairian a couple weeks ago, also about the, the celebration with uh, Fukuoka. So that's what we did with uh, Rotary this year. If you're interested in being involved in any grants we make coming up, please join the committee. We're very active. Uh, we would love to have you, and thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Allison. Um, or, thank, thank you, David. David. Allison, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Could you reintroduce your guest and why she is here? So our guest, again, is Lil Enriquez, the Executive Director for the Mycelium Youth Network. And I'm going to let you explain in just 10 seconds. We work to prepare young people for climate change using a combination of climate adaptation and climate mitigation programming directly into their school sites. And our programming is Next Generation Science Stand of the Line. And the Rotary Fund funded us for the air purification kits. Uh, students are really concerned about air purifiers. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for being, being with us. us. Tom, Tom Malone, are you online there? Can we, I see you at the top of the screen. Can we yep. highlight Tom? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. you're good. Okay, you're good. great. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, share that there were five bell ringers for Cal Stanley. Uh, Lorna Padilla, Ruth Straub. Just uh, slow down, I got, I got it. it. Ruth Straub. Stephanie Casenza. Stephanie Casenza. Wise Allen. Wise Allen. And Joycey Mack. And Joycey Mack. Thank you all. Okay, Tom. Cut the applause. Okay. So Get out of here, Tom. Tom tell, tell us about the A's. You have a new okay, so I gotta sell a ticket. All right. So we've sold uh, about just over. 50 tickets and we've given away about 20 tickets to a local Rotary Club. So we have about 30 tickets left. It's been a slow start to this, uh, you know, for the A's. And uh, we've never had a problem selling out this game. But I would just want to invite, if you have friends in other Rotary Clubs, we would like to invite them to come to the game. And if for some of the recipients of um, our grants, we, uh, please uh, contact me and we can give away any extra tickets to the, any of some of those recipients. Um, I wanted to share just a couple of uh, slides. It looks like I'm having trouble with my PowerPoint. Um, in case, let's see. So these are the seats, they're in the Golden Road Landing and we will have food there. Uh, prior to the game, we will have a tailgate outside of the stadium uh, in the lower right corner of this image. Uh, so Dudley will be hosting a bar and we will have drinks and it'll just be uh, some time to socialize before going into the stadium. Uh, there is plenty of room to walk around inside of our seats uh, in this Golden Road landing. It's basically two sections uh, for 100 people. So lots of room to spread out. Um, and so June 5th is our game and uh, with Dudley hosting in the bar, 
And then in August against the Yankees, we'll have a paella cook-off with the San Leandro Rotary Club and Dudley's better half, uh, who makes a mean paella, I hear. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tom. And uh, it showed $100 for a ticket. We have discounted the tickets to $80, which really just covers our price for the ticket. So thank you, Tom. Uh, Trisha Connors, could you come up and tell us? I said a little bit about the gala last week, but I wanted to do it live. Could you? Yes, thank you, Dudley. So the gala was a huge success. say people were in the mood for gratitude. Uh, Leah Alameda, when we started, had set our goal at $85,000 net. When we introduced the event and sent out the save the dates, we said, no, we, we think we can raise $100,000 net. Oh, and also they said, don't plan on more than 125 guests. Well, we raised $125,000 net. you raised because you guys were the big donors and we had over 200 people in attendance the band was fantastic uh, everybody seemed to have a great time and this would not have been possible without our sponsors and without our committee and our subcommittee chairs I'm not going to read the whole committee but I do want to recognize Carrie Hamill my partner in crime as co-chair Leanne Alameda who kept us in line the whole way most of the way <laughs> Uh, Christine Watson, Jenny Hunsberger, Ruth Straub, Diane Schaefer, who was working so hard throughout the event and gathered all the volunteers, and then Pat Williams and Teresa Wayand at the end, putting together all the computer stuff that Carrie, that none of us understood. So anyway, thank you everyone, and uh, we look forward to next year. We, we have, have time, time to give Trisha and Carrie Hamill and that whole crew standing. This, this was, was a, a this was, was a record gala, and, 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 and that, that, that 125,000 goes, goes directly to the ORE, all of our programs that we're going to fund, like David was talking about for next year. Jack McAvoy. Dudley, I noticed you were speaking and went through the entire committee. There, there was, was a man on the committee, it was. <laughs> so it just says what this club would be like if three, three years ago we didn't include women. And I'd like to ring the bell for Fisher. Thank you. Jack McAvoy rings the bell for Fisher Connors. Well, we would have raised 5,000 bucks, Jack. I think we could have done that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Mary Jean. I like to ring a bell for Trisha Connor because the money is going to my year. <laughs> Mary John rings a bell for Trisha Connor. Okay, uh, Mark Rosen, are you out there? Can we highlight Mark? I am here, Dudley. Give me a minute. Go ahead. Go Dudley? I hear you. You're wasting time. Uh, Okay, I'm here to just uh, remind people that we're going to Elkhorn Slough on June 11th for kayaking. Uh, many of you may not be familiar with Elkhorn Slough. It is one of the top areas that people come to to see marine life, um, very diverse marine life in that area. Uh, people ask me when we're kayaking, will we see sharks? Yeah, there are little sharks in the slough. Uh, we'll see otters, we'll see seas, seals, we'll see all sorts of things. It's a really calm slew to kayak in, no experience needed. So there's information up on the website and President Dudley told me to keep it to a minute. So there I am, Dudley. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Mark, we appreciate it. Kayak in Elkhorn Slough on next Saturday the 11th. Jesse Smith. Returns and guests. My name is Jesse Schmidt. I'm the chair of the Business Development Committee, and I have an event to tell you about, which hopefully we can pull this slide up, but I'll just start talking about it. This event is on Tuesday, June 21st. It's the Summer Solstice Mixer. There's a lot of collaboration on this. So this is in conjunction with the New Member Engagement Committee. This is also a joint event with the Oakland African American Chamber of Commerce. So we expect a pretty good turnout for this. It's being hosted at the home 
in the backyards of outdoors of the home of Giovanna Tanzio, Rotarian, many of you know her. Uh, 5.30 to 7.30, Locale Foods is catering with charcuterie. We have Brooklyn West Winery and Stu Epstein gonna be doing some wine pouring. We have the Oakland Interfaith Gospel Choir performing during the event. It's gonna be fantastic. The address is right there on the flyer. We hope to see all of you. If you're a current Rotarian, please reach out to a new Rotarian and invite them to this event. Let's get them engaged. And also, if you have a prospective member, this is another great event to invite them to. So hope to see you out on Tuesday the 21st. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Uh, real quick things. Uh, so we're going to be here in person uh, as best we can through the end of the month. We have four more regular meetings and then the demotion of Dudley Thompson. Uh, I get my ticket and I'm going to shuffle off to Buffalo where I'm going to sit by the lake and think about the day. Thank you. Uh, the uh, Oakland Chinatown Safety Alarms had a great event last uh, a service event last Saturday. We handed out over 300 safety alarms. It was in conjunction with San Francisco Rotary Club number two, the, Oakland, uh, the San Francisco Chinatown uh, Rotary Club, the Oakland Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, Asians United, the Oakland Police Department, and the Department of Justice. It was a great collaborative event. Thank you everybody who, we're gonna be more organized. We have one coming up on Saturday the 18th. Uh, we do need volunteers for it. Uh, you heard about Lake Merritt Gardens, Ace Baseball, Kayaking, Business Robert Kidd has a trail walk in Tilden Park at the end of June on the 24th. And the Rotary Kingpins, if you can take a bowling ball, put three fingers in it, and roll it down the lane, you are qualified to be on our team if you have $65 uh, for six weeks. Uh, please consider joining our Rotary uh, bowling team, the Rotary Kingpins. Uh, let me know if you have any interest. Tell me what day did the, 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 the team meet for the Olympics? I'm sorry. What the, days did meet for the Wednesday nights. Uh, Wednesday nights, and it starts the beginning of July. Okay, uh, I'm done here, and now we are going to start our program. Uh, I'm going to, Nicole, could you come up? Uh, we're, uh, a few months ago, uh, some folks on the board said, let's meet people that join uh, during COVID. Well, Nicole joined prior to COVID. Actually, she resigned during COVID, and she's back with us. So we're gonna ask Nicole, as she comes back as a member of the club, to share three minutes of your life. And we're gonna really keep this tight as best we can. Jason has cards here. Thank you. Well, hello, uh, my name is Nicole Wilhelm. And just to slight correction, I didn't resign. I moved to Folsom, enjoyed the Sacramento Rotary, uh, which I was on the board of trustees for. It was amazing. Um, however, our business uh, did really well. I'm on a wife and husband real estate team. If you ask me, husband and wife, if you ask my husband, um, but we all know it's really my five-year-old who runs the show. <laughs> uh, I am also a soon-to-be TEDx alumni. I, uh, this year, had an opportunity to talk about mental real estate, which is a term that I'm calling, uh, basically, we all spend so much time focusing on the real estate that you can purchase. Uh, or the physical real estate that you can buy and sell, but not enough on the real estate you already own, which is in your mind or your mindset. So this year I'm going to be talking about it at TEDx Cool Park, which I'm very excited for. Um, I'm also a Bay Area native, uh, which I would say I'm a unicorn, because not a lot of us are born and raised in, in the Bay Area, uh, particularly San Francisco. Um, so I'm very proud of that. And I am also very excited to be back at the Rotary. So thank you so much for welcoming me back to uh, the Open Rotary. And the way that I found it, if you're wondering, is my husband's uh, mom, so my mom-in-law, she was actually the president of the Rotary in the Philippines. Um, so she was the president of Pangasinan. So uh, fun fact there. Thank you. Okay, uh, Pam Clausen, could you please share a little bit about yourself? Thank you, um, President Dudley and fellow Rotarians. Thank you for the opportunity to do my three-minute intro today. 
I joined Rotary almost two years ago while on the glide path towards retirement at the encouragement of my husband, John Clausen, a Rotarian in Stockton and Oakland for over 35 years. John and I were introduced via eHarmony over 20 years ago. Um, and even though at the time he was geographically undesirable, being 70 miles away, he has blessed me with his presence as well as his four children and our six grandchildren. I fully retired from traditional employment in April of this year. I am a third generation Oakland resident. My grandmother moved to Oakland in the 1890s and graduated from Oakland High in 1917. My dad graduated from Oakland High in 1943, and my mom graduated from University High in 1945. I was born in 55 and graduated from Skyline in 1972. I'm a member of Lakeshore Avenue Baptist Church, as well as occasionally attending Corpus Christi with John. I graduated from Linfield College in 1975 with a degree in home economics, while also piquing an interest in accounting. I received my MBA from UC Berkeley in 1978 and spent the first 22 years of my business career with KPMG in San Francisco, where I served for a time as the regional partner in charge of governmental and nonprofit services. In those years, I audited the city and county of San Francisco, the county of Alameda, and many other nonprofit entities in the Greater Bay Area. In 2000, I became the Chief Financial Officer of American Baptist Homes of the West, which is now Human Good. Human Good is the eighth largest nonprofit senior living organization in the country and currently owns or manages 100 senior affordable housing communities and 21 life plan communities, including Grand Lake Gardens and Piedmont Gardens here in Oakland. I am also proud of just completing service as the board chair of Caring Communities, a leading member-owned liability insurance company to exclusively serve not-for-profit senior housing and care organizations. My newest opportunity is serving our, on our care team for our, my 94-year-old mom following her stroke on March 31st. Mom has been able to return to her home in the Oakland Hills that she and my father built in 1954. Fortunately, she's rehabbing extremely well. I value the connections I've made so far in Oakland Rotary and also in McCall, Idaho Rotary, where John and I like to spend summers, 65 years for me so far and enjoy the use of our cabin on the lake my great-grandfather built in 1917. I've recently been elected to serve on the board of ORE and I'm excited to be able to provide service in that regard. I have a passion for finding ways that ADUs can be part of the solution to creating more affordable housing and continue to explore opportunities using past connections. I really enjoyed attending the Casita Coalition held here in the ballroom on April 9th. I look forward to making many more connections with Rotarians over the coming years. Thank you. Lou, the reality. See, folks, I put in one extra minute for each person so they can get here. We're going to get back on it. <laughs> Thank you, President Donnelly. Yeah. So, uh, Name's Lou Regali. I'm a, uh, I was born in uh, Boston. <laughs> trained as a chemist and now live in uh, Oakland uh, with a small business in uh, Jack London Square. We do custom printing and uh, under the name of Quantity Postcards. Uh, and there's some uh, postcards of uh, Oakland in the, on the back table, free for anybody who wants it. Um, but most of my time is spending on a new project that I'm involved with in a, a nonprofit called Home All. And the, uh, the best, best can describe it, I guess, by describing it metaphor metaphorically, anyways, by a couple of lines from a, uh, the play uh, My Fair Lady. That was uh, Professor Higgins, Higgins talking to or explaining to, uh, advising uh, Eliza, Eliza on something. And it goes something like this. Uh, Anyways, Eliza, uh, 
Eliza, what's important is not whether you have good manners or bad manners or any kind of manners. Just have the same manners for every human being. So anyways, that's a pretty good idea. A little tough to work on, work by, and that's because our culture doesn't support those kind of, that kind of behavior. Our culture supports a uh, competitive and, uh, uh, and dominant type of culture. So the, the goal of the nonprofit Home Off that I started uh, is looking to find ways in the community to shift that behavior to a more nurturing, caring uh, kind of uh, behavior. And, uh, in the, and in the hopes we have uh, a lot of happy people and cooperative people in the community. I invite you to uh, think about joining. Thank you very much. Now, don't you just love that accent? My, my dad, my dad was uh, born in Boston and never lost it. My father, my father. Okay, I'm gonna talk about, I have three minutes, I'm gonna talk about my family, my career, and my retirement motto, which is do good and have fun. So, my family. Uh, I am married to David Alexander, who is a long-suffering but wonderful man. It'll be 31 years on June 16th. I have three stepkids and one biological child. My oldest is Peter Alexander, perhaps you've heard of him. He is NBC News Chief White House Correspondent and co-anchor of the Saturday Today Show. He is married to, oh yeah, Allison, he's married to Allison Starling, who is a seven-time Emmy Award-winning anchor currently anchoring the 4 and 5 p.m. newscasts for the ABC affiliate in D.C. They have two wonderful children, my grandchildren, who will be nine and seven respectively this year, Ava and Emma. Second in line, Rebecca Alexander. She is a psychotherapist in private practice in New York City. She is also an author. She wrote Not Fade Away, a memoir of senses lost and found, which I highly recommend that each of you buy. It is available on Amazon. And give them for Christmas. And give them for Christmas and keep them for yourself and you know, hand them out on the street, whatever. Um, it is the story of how she has dealt with um, a genetic disorder called Usher syndrome, which is causing her to go progressively deaf and blind. She is also, however, an extreme athlete. She climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with myself and Lauren, my biological daughter, and then swam from Alcatraz to San Francisco not a month later. Kevin Alexander is next in line. Uh, he is perhaps the kid I'm most proud of. He has had a rough go of it, but he's now managing a board and care in San Diego. Finally, my biological daughter, Lauren Alexander, she is an account group supervisor at DDB Health, where she composes information for physicians about pharmaceuticals, most recently, CML, a form of leukemia. Okay, my career, I got one minute. I've been a lawyer for over 40 years. I started in 1977 at Pillsbury, Madison, and Sutro. I made partner in 1985. And in 1994, I left because it was impossible to be a mother, at least for me, uh, and have a national litigation practice with four kids. So I went to Kaiser Permanente, which turned out to be uh, the career of my life. I spent most of the 22 years there as chief legal officer of a national Permanente organization. Finally, my retirement motto, do good, have fun. The doing good part is, is why I joined Rotary, to take advantage of your community service, our community service infrastructure. And I particularly like doing the hands-on work, including the service projects. For fun, I like to hike, bike, and little known fact, crochet. Um, <laughs> um, and a shout out to Steve Blair who sponsored my membership and also taught me everything I know about cycling and probably saved my life last Friday. Finally, on that gala, 
I own that New York apartment and I highly recommend you bid often and bid high. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Pauline. And I will give a report on that apartment. Punch and I are going there next year. We bought it a year ago at the auction. Okay, uh, David Kirsten. There we go, buddy. We are almost right back on time. Save four minutes here. Thank you, everybody. Hi, uh, my name is David Kirsten, and thanks for the opportunity to present today. Unfortunately, I can't sing or rap, so I was going to tell you a little bit about my story today and what I do. I'm a video producer, but first I wanted to just say what I'm grateful for. I always like to say that to get grounded. I have two girls, seven, and a stepdaughter who's 16. I'm grateful for them and uh, Rotary Club and my B and I group. So um, I'm actually a come from a background in politics. I worked in politics for 20 years as a budget and policy expert, and I went to Georgetown University in public policy, and I still keep a little hand in politics, believe it or not. That's kind of a nasty business. Um, as an adjunct professor at the University of San Francisco, and I have done communications for more than 20 years working on campaigns, and that's what I do primarily now is a video producer. I produce videos for entrepreneurs to connect them with their ideal client. I also do some uh, videos for Rotary, and we have, we're going to do one for the BDC Mixer. Um, the sweet spot there is to really connect you with your ideal client, be it a nonprofit or a business organization, by telling your story. I have a real intricate process that I've perfected. Well, not quite there yet, but um, pretty good for working with people to make them feel comfortable on camera. And you don't even have to be on camera. You can do it as a voiceover. Um, I also do some podcasts. One's uh, called Quantum Leap. It's on business development, uh, telling the story of small business owners. And another is a ripple effect called on uh, health issues. And those are going to be coming back in the fall. And I did want to just go over my core values and just say who my um, ideal client is. Um, core values are collaboration. This is something that I really see in Rotary, and I believe that effective collaboration is the foundation of business success. Vision, uh, vision is the key to fulfillment and goal achievement. Justice, I believe in being honorable and just in all that we do, and I feel like there's kind of a short supply of justice in some areas of our culture these days. Knowledge, I believe that all problems can be solved with adequate knowledge. Excellence, I believe in delivering a high standard of excellence. And my ideal client is really just somebody who's open to the possibility of being on video and just, it really comes down to connection and just wanting to take a chance and do some video and see, see what we come up with. So thanks a lot for being my valued uh, friends and Rotarians. Thank you, David. Okay, Trisha, you're back up here. So you only get one minute because I already gave you three. No. <laughs> I thought because I went under last time, I might get a little extra. Anyway, thank you, Dudley. We're good. Okay. When thinking about how to introduce myself to my fellow Rotarians, Johnny Cash's I've Been Everywhere Man kept coming into my head. I grew up in Garden Grove, it's near Disneyland, for those of you who aren't familiar. Graduated from UCLA, thanks in part to a Rotary scholarship, and then moved along. I, my first stop was San Francisco. I found my roommate from an ad in the Chronicle and moved north knowing no one. I got involved in local politics, quit my real job, and then went to work for John Burton, a mentor who has dedicated his life to service. I moved to Sacramento as one of John's legislative staffers and met my Rotary sponsor and dear friend, Carrie Hamill. During my time in the legislature, Don, John not so kindly enlightened me to the fact that I wasn't as great a communicator as I thought I was. Uh, I went to law school, then represented injured workers, lobbied in Sacramento, and met my husband, Ron Connors, who was just beginning his management career at Merrill Lynch. For those of you who don't know, management at Merrill Lynch in those days meant you move. Our first stop was Chicago. I 
worked for a National Trade Association and traveled the country lobbying state legislators. In my spare time, I joined the board of a nonprofit dedicated to helping foster youth transition to independence. After Chicago, we moved to Spokane, Washington, and our oldest son was born. Always an avid tennis player, I volunteered for the Boys and Girls Club, teaching young homeless children to play tennis while their parents went to look for a job or housing. From Spokane, we moved to Portland, had boy number two, and eight days later, Ron came home to say he was promoted, and we were moving to St. Paul, Minnesota. I will spare you the awkward details, but Siberia, also known as St. Paul, was not part of my game plan. Anyway, we moved to St. Paul, and I quickly learned that my skepticism was misplaced. We met some of our best friends there and really enjoyed the Twin Cities. I did not take the bar exam, but I took the training course and became a CASA, a court-appointed special advocate, and represented some kids. I have to hurry. After four years in Minnesota, we were off to Paramus, New Jersey, just outside of Manhattan. Our children were entering school, so I assumed no more moves for a while. I took a couple of bar, bar exams, I worked for legal aid, and then hung my own shingle just before the mortgage crisis hit. I represented consumers ripped off by unscrupulous mortgage lenders, debt settlement companies, and uh, credit card companies. Just as our oldest son was about to enter high school, Ron was promoted again, and we were back to the Bay, this time San Jose. I quickly learned that the Bay Area had plenty of lawyers serving those in need, so I decided to make a change. I got a master's in education and taught high school, government, and U.S. history up until the pandemic hit. Now, I teach law-related education to At Promise Youth with Fresh Lifelines for Youth. I teach a 12-week program, or we facilitate a 12-week program to high schoolers at continuation schools or those already in the juvenile justice system. The goal of this amazing nonprofit is to pull kids out of the school to prison pipeline or to help youth already in the system not return to it. I'm proud to play a small part in this amazing organization, and if you'd like to help as well, let me know. Thank you. Wow, thank, thank you. you. And, uh, very good. Uh, for, we normally give a speaker gift, and I don't know if you know, we don't do like send a check off every week for every speaker. What we do is we budget, and send, we budget $4,000 for speakers every year. And so we honor each speaker as part of that. And so those who gave their self-introduction today, thank you. And in your honor, we will be uh, giving a gift to SRAG, the uh, new Rotarian area focus for the environment. Uh, SRAG is the Rotary Sustainability Action Group. Uh, and they have a focus on biodiversity, sustainable living, pollution, the climate, food systems, and a circular economy. Thank you for sharing everything today. And Mary, you see what you have to look forward to. Keep it short, but give a great talk. Thanks. Um, okay, do we have any other bell ringers out there today? Do you know? Tom, do you, we have any? Okay, uh, Lois Corrin. Lois Corrin. You got Got it right. Um, I just want to give a shout out to all the people who presented today. I guess I joined during the pandemic because I had to make sure I did it before Seth was no longer president. But um, no offense, gentlemen, for the women, when you talk about being a CPA at a big firm, that was really hard. And you, young lady, just transitioned from being a partner at Pillsbury Madison Sutro and then deciding that you need to go to Kaiser because they really didn't accommodate mothers. That was totally not the plan. So as a very proud mother of a young woman who's like a real badass, I just want to give a shout out. And for the gentlemen here, to me, all the gentlemen in this particular Rotary are all feminists, and I love you guys. Thank you, Laura. Ralph, can I have a little power here? I still want to keep my power here. I've got the hammer. Okay. Um, this is Dudley. Yes. Tom. We we did have one more uh, bell ringer, and that was from Lorna in appreciation of the gala committee. Okay, Lorna, did you mark us for the gala? Patricia, Terry, and everyone else. Thank you. 
Okay, okay good. good. Um, I, I do want to say that, 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 that so last week was sort of the end of the collection of the DEI surveys. Uh, we got almost half of the club to complete the DEI survey. So I really thank everybody for participating and it will give us a great base for that. Okay, thank you. We got, this is a great list. And I'm gonna make it, I have two minutes left and we started four minutes late, how about that? Uh, thank you for being, a, oh, oh, Greg, Greg uh, uh, Knight, you're out there. I'm here, President Dudley. I'm actually coming to you uh, via Zoom from Little River, California, and it's absolutely gorgeous. But I am here to introduce next week's speaker, Fred Palmer. So, President Dudley and fellow Rotarians, please join us next week uh, when we will hear from Fred Palmer. He's celebrating 27 years in an LGBTQ-centered business, and Fred will discuss activism and how it affects our daily business lives, how diversity matters in business, and the importance of supporting other LGBTQ enterprise-owned businesses. And Fred will discuss his personal experiences coming out in the mid 80s in corporate America, becoming an entrepreneur, and most importantly of all, how we are all connected. So please join us next week. Great, thank you, Greg. Um, Greg, tell Randy, uh, it's his retirement. Is that part of the reason that you're up there, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, we are in Little River for his retirement party. And if anyone's free uh, Saturday, come on up and join us. Great. And tell Randy hello for us. And now we're expecting him to come back to the club. Thank you. I will let him know. Uh, OK, next week, uh, next week, we're honoring the Cerrone Lena Scholars. Uh, we're going to have a reception starting at 12, so I invite you to come early. Uh, and the reception is really to honor the teachers that were influential to the students that we're going to be giving scholarships to. So I encourage you to come early, meet the teachers, meet the students, and then during the meeting, we'll, uh, we'll, give out, we'll honor the, the uh, recipients of the scholarships. So thank you, Dana Sack. Thank you, past president, past district governor, Ed Jellin. Merlin Edwards, thank you for introducing Mary and welcome Mary to our club. Thank you, Sean Marks and Cal Stanley for reintroducing Cal. We love you, Cal. Um, David Kidner, thanks so much. He had a great year in community service this year. And, 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 and David, David's been leading that committee for a few years and he's turning it over to Bruce Nye, who will head community service next year. Good job and we look forward to your leadership, Bruce. Uh, Thank you, uh, uh, Tom Lamone. Uh, buy a ticket or two for the A's. Uh, if you're, and what Tom was alluding to is, if you're a nonprofit or a grant recipient, we will give you tickets to the A's game. If you let me or Tom Lamone know uh, in the next day or two, we'll get you a link and we'll get tickets to you. We have extra tickets we're giving to our grant recipients. Uh, go, boss. What was that? I, I can't hear. You don't have the mic, Sean. Um, okay, uh, yes, we do allow Red Sox fans, and if, if Red Sox fans will buy tickets, you're welcome to come. We need to sell some tickets. Okay, uh, thank you, Jesse Smith, Mark Rosen, uh, Nicole, Pam, Lou, Pauline, David, thanks so much for giving yourself introduction. Greg Knight, thanks for introducing our speaker next week. Our production team, you guys are great. Peter Sherris had a hand in it today, but thanks so much for putting this together and coming back. <laughs> no, you gotta keep these guys going. I know it's like, thank you. Okay, I wanna thank everyone for participating today. Remember, we are Rotary, serve to change lives, and don't keep Rotary a secret. This meeting is adjourned.